How's it going everyone? Titanhawk here and today we're going to go through how to set up our code repository in a modern style to be best prepared for our in-game Rocket League overlay. So let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to develop this overlay using React. So first things first, what we are going to want to do is we are going to want to run the following command here npx create react app we can call this overlay demo and then we can say template in typescript we're going to do everything in typescript here that way it is very easy to understand the data that's coming through and for us to create our custom types if you don't know what typescript is it is essentially javascript but that everything is typed i'll go ahead and let you do some more research on that independently but you're going to want to run this command and it will create these files over here so once you've done that, then the next thing is you'll see that I have this SOS w, or WS Relay file moved in here. That should be the same code that you obtained from the last video to run the Relay server. So you will want to just go ahead and move that in your overlay demo folder or whatever you decide to name your project. You'll want to move that in there. And then we can go ahead and start modifying the files in our source. So you'll see right away that I have deleted a couple of files. I've deleted the logo, the report web vitals, the setup tests, the app CSS, and the app tests.tsx files. And then I modified the other ones to just simply be more basic in what we will need for this tutorial. So you'll see here then that I have, um, I just have this simple function to export this app component. Then here in index CSS, we just set our body to be font family, Arial, Helvetica, sans serif, and then index is just going to simply look for the root component in our HTML uh, file and render the app. This is all you need for now to do it, but um, if I were you, if you were going to make a full overlay, you are going to want to modify the index.css to have it be where the body has a margin of zero the height is going to be 1080 pixels and the width is going to be 1920 pixels as this when you create a broadcasting overlay for rocket league you will always want to make sure the viewport for it is set to a width of 1920 by 1080 as that is the resolution that will be broadcasted out to twitch youtube or whatever streaming platform you use so the next thing we're going to then do is start installing some of our dependencies the first dependency we're going to install is the styled components library if you don't know what the style components library is i will go ahead and put a link down below in the description but it essentially allows us to create react components with already pre-built in styling you'll see more about this when we begin developing the overlay later on in this series so the first thing you're gonna, you're gonna have to do is do npm install styled components this may take a few seconds as this is a rather large dependency, but it will make our code very readable and very easy to follow should we need to make any style changes or bug fixes later on in the series. The next dependency that we're going to install is the concurrently dependency. Essentially, in short, this dependency is going to allow us to run our Relay and our React app simultaneously on different ports. That way, it, the entire project can run locally instead of needing to deploy to an external service. So, we can go ahead and run another npm install command. We can do npm i-d concurrently. I'll put a link to the NPM page of Concurrently in the description if you want to check out more about it. But essentially this just allows us to run two JavaScript files or TypeScript files at the same time that allows us to work successfully with this project. Now we are ready to begin adding in some more modifications to our package.json file. So in this package.json file, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find your scripts here with start. So this is going to default to the base React scripts start. We're going to want to modify this now that we have our concurrently installed to our application. So what we can go ahead and do is we can cut this. Don't don't just delete it. We want to cut this because we're going to need this for later. And then we can do concurrently. And then you will want to do the 
backslash. I can't know if that's a backslash or forward slash. I can never remember. We're gonna want to add in so here. We're going to do node. And then we're gonna want to do the path to our SOS WS relay file. So uh, this will be dot slash SOS dash WS dash relay slash WS dash relay and end it with the other closing slash like so. And there we go. That will run the first process. And then now the second one, we can go ahead and put in our escape characters here as well. And this is where we can just put in our react script start. This is what yours should look like. If this does not work, just make sure you trace down the correct path to this ws-relay.js file that is in that SOS WS relay folder. If you've done this correctly, when we run this application, you will notice that it will try to automatically connect to the over to the WebSocket, and it will also run the React app in a separate instance, and it should open up your uh, uh, default web browser to localhost 3000. That might be a bit of a mouthful there, might be a bit overwhelming, but you will see later on when we try to run the application. You can go ahead and save this, and then we are ready to start structuring our project to have the correct folders. Now inside of the source folder is where we're going to want to create several other folders that allow us to structure this in a modern architecture and make it easily accessible and extendable. So with this, there are going to be several things that you may want to add. I will go ahead and create the structure that I have used in the past for collegiate and professional overlays. I will go ahead and create that here. So the first folder you're gonna to want to create is an assets folder. If you uh, have any images, external images that you're always going to be displaying, this is the great place to store them here. You can then break this down to be videos, folder or videos, pictures, transitions, whatever you may use. Uh, I will touch more on like the transitions and the video elements later on in the series toward the end as a bonus feature that you can add in at your discretion. Then you will want to make sure you are adding more folders here to underneath source. Then you're gonna to want to add a components folder. You'll see here that this is going to be all of our components that we create individually. So the, for our scoreboard, our score bug component, that's gonna be inside of this folder. Our timer can be inside of this folder. Anything that you want to create that is going to be used throughout your application, we're going to want to store in this components folder. Now the next thing is going to be a constants folder. As you are developing this, I found that you're going to likely be restyling and changing a lot of sizes, font sizes, colors, etc. all throughout the duration of the project. I found it best to create a constants folder and then you can always just reference the JSON full or JSON file that is in here and then you can reference that in your styled components. That way you can easily just change one number in one place and it will automatically update all of those in all the other places. Next thing you're going to want to add is a context folder. So to connect to our WebSocket, which we will be doing later in this series, is we're going to create a context that we can use throughout the React application. This is also to prevent it from unwanted crashing. That way, the context is just used as a way for us to get our data from whatever component we need it from, and then we can go ahead and store it whatever we need to. This will also be for storing all the game data that all of our components are going to access. Instead of having to pass it down from component to component through props, we can create a context that way we can just access it from wherever. And then another folder we're going to want to create is one for models. Models is essentially another word for custom type. All of our custom types that we can expect of the data we're going to be receiving from the WebSocket, we're going to create inside of this models folder. That way we know exactly the kind of data we're expecting and exactly how we can access it. This will include the data types if it's a string, a integer or a number or a list of objects. The next thing we're going to want to do is create a scenes folder. The scenes folder here is what I will probably not be using a whole bunch in this series, but it is equivalent to the pages of the overlay. So 
Say you have a pre-game, mid-game, and a post-game scheme, you can create those here and then that way you then you can access all the components in the components folder. So again, you'll probably you're gonna have a pre-game, a in-game, and a post-game scene. In this series, I will only be doing a in-game scene and then leave that to the, the pre-game and the post-game options to you at, to implement on your own time. Now, the final folder that we're going to create is a services folder. Oops, can't type. A services folder. And this is going to be all of your utility functions that you are going to be using throughout the application. So say we need to only get the blue team or the orange team players, we can create a service for that to automatically return that based on the data that is provided to it. So this is just going to be your modern architecture here. You can create more folders and set and rename these as you wish. I just rename these or name these as they are now to be as transparent and as easy read readable as possible. So once you have this ready, we are now ready to begin actually implementing our overlay. So I will continue this series in the next video where we will look to begin setting up the code to connect to our WebSocket and start implementing our custom types. So please be sure to subscribe to stay tuned for more uploads with this series. Until then, if you have any other questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section down below. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for the video, and be sure to have that notification bell turned on so that way you don't miss whenever I upload a new video. Until then, my name is TitanHawk17, wishing you a fantastic day wherever you may be.